In this video, we're going to explore how Kahoot's scoring system actually works. So that way you can use this to your advantage and win every single time. If you're new here, I'm a certified math and physics teacher in Ontario who holds a master's degree in statistics. I currently teach high school math and physics in Ontario and as you all probably know if you're a student or teacher, Kahoot is a powerful tool for teaching and evaluating your students. It, it kind of makes it fun to grade your students and evaluate if they understand uh, the thing you've been teaching and students usually love it because it's kind of competitive, right? So it's a polling software that students use their phone or laptops to complete. Then you get points if you get the answer right. So typically if you answer the question correctly and you answer it instantly, then you'll get a thousand points. That's the maximum number of points. And then if you take all the time and you still answer the uh, answer correctly, you'll get five hundred points. So in the last Kahoot I did with my students, I noticed that a lot of students were trying to go super fast to optimize a few a few points, but they would often misclick because they were trying to go too fast. So I, I asked myself, like, what's the trade off here? Is it better to go fast or is it better to be right? So that's the main question we're going to explore in this video. And here I pulled up how Kahoot uh, scoring system works. So there's an article, you'll be able to see the link in the description below. And as always, there should be timestamps. So skip to the relevant part. But this article explains how the scoring works. And I created a formula based on what they said. So if we just pause this for now here, you'll be able to find the Desmos link in the description below. I linked the article as well here. So that that should work. There's a timer for each question that the teacher sets. So let's say there's 30 seconds. That's what I said. And I called it TC. And then the time that the student takes the answer is T here. So essentially, you can see that if you answer in zero seconds, this is going to be zero here. All of this term is going to be zero. So it's going to be one minus zero. So just one, one times a thousand, you get a thousand points. And if you answer in TC seconds, like if you take the full 30 seconds and the TCs are going to cancel and you're going to get one minus one half, which is one half, one half times 1000 is 500 points. So essentially, if you answer correctly, you get between 500 if you take the whole timer or a thousand if you answer correctly and take zero seconds. So how does the points, how do they decrease? as the time to answer increases. And it turns out it's linear and you can kind of see why this is your X and everything else is a constant. So it turns out to be a linear equation. So that's good to know already, right? Your points decrease linearly. So it's not like an exponential decay. So an extra second is a constant rate of change. So an extra second at the start removes the same amount of points than the last second at the end of the timer. So that's already very, very useful to know. And then I created this. So you, let's say there's 30 seconds, you can change the, the timer uh, as well. Let's say you want 15 seconds, you it would change the slope. But essentially, the, the larger the timer, the less points you lose per second. So in the bottom, I'll change it to English because that was for my French, but essentially, you lose 17 points per second. That's the green curve. So for the timer, when it's 30 seconds, you lose 17 points per second. So let's say we go at one second, you should be at 983. So that makes sense. So the slope of this line is 17. So this calculates the slope of the line for different times. So for example, let's say there's a, a 10 second timer, then the slope of this line is minus 50. So you should be at 950, which you are. So the shorter the timer, the more points you lose per second. And you notice that the green curve, the, the curve that determines the slope of the blue line based on the timer is not linear at all. So for example, if you have a five second timer, you lose 100 points per second. And if you have a four second timer, you lose 125 and a three second timer, you lose 167. So these are very, very short timers. So if if you had a one second timer, then you lose 500 points, which is kind of ridiculous. So 
Uh, honestly, in Kahoot, you don't really use timers less than five seconds, I don't think so. So really, you're only working from the 100 to um, 30-ish or longer. But after that, it's pretty stable. So probably around 20, 20 seconds or more, the rate of change is fairly constant. Most of the changes occur in the in the first 20 seconds. Let's say we go back to 30. We had 17 points per second. So that's what you can expect. And we go to 20. You're going to have 25 points. So anywhere around 20 points per second, that, that's what uh, you, you lose about, right? So then the question becomes, are you better off answering fast or answering correctly? And when you think about it this way, it's pretty obvious that you should answer correctly because an extra second that you take to read the answers or two, three seconds, you gain, you lose 20 points per second, but a correct answer is a thousand points. So that, that trade-off is obviously your expected value is obviously better off when you pick the right answer. So moral of the story is it's better to be right than to be fast when the timer is more than 10 or 20 seconds. So basically like all cahoots, it's by far better to be right than to be fast. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you can use this knowledge to become a better Kahoot teacher or a better Kahoot student. If you like the Desmos visualization and you wonder how you can create such interactive graphics, then you can check out my online course and my playlist that I'll link at the end of the video. Thank you for watching and as always, thank you for doing the work. Mm -hmm.